Stay away from me. Oh, baby, we are back. Back on the Live Month MMA Podcast Network, bringing you another episode. TikTok, look out the clock. We're ready to go. Another episode of the Not Safe for Work MMA show. I'm shot out of a cannon to use uh, the lexicon of Mr. Frederick Kirby. Hello, Fred. Young man. Shot out of a cannon. Yeah, what are you doing? What are you so fucking? I'm happy about, about the music. Oh, we, oh we, yeah. we didn't have music on this we're thing in back. a minute. We're back, baby. That's how you know we're serious. I'm telling you. That's how you know we're serious. Listen, because I'm, after all, there's a lot to talk about. Today. Listen, not, uh, yeah, there's <laughs> fucking nothing to talk about. We ought to start off on one of our rants about fucking pussy or farting or something because, <laughs> god damn. No, there's a few things to talk about. The card last night was a little interesting, and we'll, we'll definitely have a few talking points. But uh, well, to be <laughs> fair, it wasn't uh, the sexiest of cards. Do you want to hit on the talking point that. We're about to have a full card in Florida, uh, and we're still having people. We're still losing fights to COVID. Um, it's kind of that's a weird dichotomy. Yeah. Am I being well, am okay, I being sensitive okay, or okay, what? Okay, we're okay. We're getting right into it then. Let's, so maybe you can enlighten me on this. The last few fights that I have seen fall out due to COVID. Uh, what's the last biggest one? Uh, we we well, just had we, one, we just right? had one fall. the the main event for next week it was uh well no, no maybe not next event. week co main Brian Ortega yeah Co. now what I've noticed is I keep seeing them saying due to complications okay. due to, so like so they're for, not saying that X Y or Z tested positive anymore though well so for that it? one it was Volkanovski tested positive I believe okay the, he did. the, the Gregor Gillespie one that just popped off on this card we don't know why. Right. That, well, that what, was what about was Brian Ortega and uh, oh, well, Volkanovski tested positive. Correct. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. And then we don't. I don't think we know why the Gregor Gillespie one happened yet. Right. But still, if we're still having issues, whether it's with protocol or it's with people testing positive, how do we think we're ready to have a full st- now? I, I don't. Oh, let me just say, I don't give a fuck. Well, yeah. I, I mean, you we're can, in Ohio. <laughs> listen, if that place can fit fifteen thousand. Put 30 in there. I really don't care. It, it's meaningless to me. But especially being in Florida, I don't give a shit. Well, right, right. So right. I just – it's an interesting dichotomy to exist in when, when you're still having issues with COVID that are hitting the UFC. Right. Like it's not like we've been away from this. We, we've had fights fall out because of positive tests and that kind of stuff. Right. We've had – Positive test after fights. We, we, we're, we're still dealing with this. It hasn't been that bad. I think the UFC has handled it very well. We've, we've talked about that quite a bit. But it's still a, a, a present thing. But then we're about to have an auditorium full of people. Are they required to wear a mask or are we just saying fuck the mask too? If it's in Florida, I, it's probably fuck the masks is my guess. Well, if it's fuck the mask. If then... that shit was in Texas, in order to get in the front door, you got to spit in each other's mouth. Yeah. But, well, but I don't know about Florida. So so if there are no masks and there's 15,000 people, then we're definitely cooking with bacon grease. Let me tell you something, though. For me personally, being the sadistic prick I am, I love it. Because, A, okay, I don't know what the fuck to think, right? We don't I, get many opportunities to try to wipe Florida off the map. Well, so I feel like we got one here, so let's just let's just take it. No, let's but, just so take listen, it and run with it. Real talk, bro. I don't really know what the fuck is going on with this shit. I obviously, you know, let's save all the the crazy fucking uh, you know, conspiracy theories on either end. I believe that it's real. I believe that it's killing people. Um, so on and so forth. But I do sort of wonder sometimes how bad it is, how uh, what would happen if we did just do something like that? Not saying it's the right idea, just saying I'm fucking curious. For me personally, the idea that two states that are way the fuck away from us are going to go ahead and try it? Are you kidding me? <clears throat> That's like fucking, you know, we're sending fucking Florida and Texas in through the landmines. One of those cocksuckers blow up, we get to sit back and go, yep, keep your mask on, boys. It went to shit. If by some chance it doesn't, and we, it works. We get to go, all right, let's uh, open the shit back up. Hell yeah. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> for all me, Florida and Texas doing the Lord's work. 
Y'all do you, baby. I, now, again, it's just like with the fucking vaccine. I wasn't going to be the first cocksucker to get it. But now that about fucking 10, 20, 30 million pricks have got it, they ain't fucking growing horns and ain't none of them dead yet. Beam me up, Scotty. I just didn't want to be the first round of pricks to do it. Yeah. But do I want to be the first state that opens it up and has 20,000 people? Am I going to be the first one in the fucking nationwide arena in Columbus? You bet your tits no. But God damn it, if three, four, five states open up around us and, and you know, the proof's in the pudding. If people don't start dying and the hospitals don't get overwhelmed and so on and so forth, then maybe we can sort to of me, get back to a little bit of normality. To me, that's the only take on this. I mean, there's no other take to have. Like, at the end of the day, we got to keep pressing forward here. Sure. It's... I don't know if you can even say it's too soon at this point. Well, right. It, it might be, but we don't know. Is, the only thing is it is it's just an interesting dichotomy, I guess is all that I'm pointing out. What? Which is we're still having COVID problems, yet we're pushing with this. Right. And it's not that we're having co- I'm not even talking about having COVID problems nationally. I'm saying within the confines of the UFC, right. we're still having COVID issues. Right. But we're gonna do this. And it just it just seems it's a weird message to send. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So uh, what, what's the old saying? Is it uh, 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 cut off your nose to spite your face. Is yeah, one of these situations where they're like, "We know it's a little shoddy, but God damn it, we want to prove that our hog's the biggest in the room, so we'll risk all y'all dying." <laughs> if Florida opens up, we want to make sure that we're there to see if it works. Maybe Dana White's like me. Well, to be fair, I think Dana White leans towards the old school Trump thing, like. We're all fine. Ain't nobody dying. A couple of y'all might get sick and get a cough. Stop being a pussy. We're going to rock and roll. We'll get the fucking, everybody will get vaccined. And I got to say, bro, I know motherfuckers don't really like Dana White like that. And I know he lies. And there's definitely some some negative things you can point out about him. <laughs> Generally, we overall, love him on this I fuck with him, man. I fuck with his bravado. I fuck with his no, we, we both We both love us some Dana White. I mean, and you know, to be fair. I don't know how you can't. To be fair, he hasn't really put them in extreme danger. Maybe there was a couple decisions in the beginning where he was like, we're going to an Indian reservation. <laughs> I was like, all right, D, chill. And then fucking literally like the head of Disney had to call them and say, oh, no, you ain't. I love how, Dana yeah. White was going. We were like, right. fuck it, we're going. Well, where's Swan- fucking Tonto and Swanto at, Jack? We'll go wherever the fuck we can have a fight. We're making it happen. I love how uh, Dana White was on some podcast and he was talking to uh, – the one I think it was one of the Logan Pauls and Jake Pauls like hype men, one one of those guys that maybe runs a channel that they I don't know what the what the scenario is. Right. But anyway, he's talking to him, and he he said he would bet a million dollars on Ben Askren. Oh, being Logan Paul, and I just love the responses, which were like like the you know like cue a fighter in the UFC making ten grand for a fight, and you got fucking Dana White over here saying he's gonna bet a million on a yeah, ridiculous no, spectacle. No, that that. If it's if it's what I'm thinking about, that might you might have just showed how very little you know about boxing, Mister. Oh yeah, I don't know who it was. It looked no, no that, that's Zab Judah. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, okay, this, okay. that's not what I'm. Okay, thinking. okay, okay. I was gonna say no. he does he does not run Jake no, Paul's no, 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 YouTube no, 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 page. No, no, no. Zab Judah's a goddamn legend. No, that's not who I'm. Okay, talking well, about. If, unless it's a different thing. There was, was another one with. Did you see the shit with Henry Cejudo and Mike Tyson? Uh, no, but I was going to say Bro, that if that, you that have was, not seen DW that. was on the Mike Tyson podcast yes, when all that happened correct. when he said that I'll bet a million. Uh, but this was somewhere else. Okay, okay. But, we need to talk about that too before the end of the podcast. Well, I don't even think we've discussed Jake Paul or Jake Paul fucking. Uh, or yeah, I think his name is Jake. I Paul, don't know which is one of the Paul's. Ben Askren, one of the Paul. I don't think we talked about that before the end of the we podcast. Can. We can. Curious what you think. Uh, but if you have not seen the Mike Tyson Henry Cejudo discussion, it is wild. I don't. I Tyson was fucked out of his mind <laughs> during this. And you had Cejudo trying to like I don't it was bizarre. It was just oh, you know really what? awkward. It was a little it was a while ago, right? And it would I guess I think I'm I just have now seeing seen clips of it. Yeah, okay, I think I have it keeps it. kicking over like his Cejudo will go on some little rant and they'll kick over to Tyson and he's like yeah, just follow what dude's dog for two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Like, what the fuck did he say? You're like, it's, it's yeah, a bizarre, yeah. like. I think they were like, I don't know, ayahuasca or some shit. I don't like know. That. It, it was, was wild. Fucked. He was, yeah, he was hammered on whatever he was on. Uh, we could talk about the Paul shit right now. Why not? Um, 
Okay, we'll quickly just no rules on this shit. That's yeah, true. Well, well, what are your what are your thoughts on the, the, so uh, Jake Paul is going to box Ben Askren? Do you care? Or one of the Pauls. I don't remember which. Yeah, Paul. whatever. Doesn't yeah. matter. Luke Paul, Jake Paul. It doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> Luke Paul. Uh, I, I don't know this cat's name. I think it, what is it? Jake Paul and Logan Paul. Logan. Paul. <laughs> Luke, are we just say Luke Paul? I'm pretty sure it's Jake. Yeah, Paul let's just uh, fuck him. Luke Paul. Yeah. We'll be Luke in the Paul and Ben Askren. We in the middle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is, it's, um, it is in the middle. What's uh, your intrigue level for this thing? <laughs> I won't lie, dog. I'm interested. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm it's interested. like a fucking Mandy Moore song from the 90s, son. I won't admit it out loud, but I'm fucking interested, baby. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I, I. It'll be a walk to remember. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there it is. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I. On one hand, I think it's obvious, like obviously being an MMA podcast, MMA fans, we're highly rooting for Ben Askren. I assume that he would probably win as he's actually fought you know, real high level competition and real fighting scenarios before. But then it's like, what if, what if this is where we realize just how different a actual fight and a actual boxing match are like, you know, if Ben Askren, you know, I've seen people say that, well, Ben Askren is not going to box him. He, he's going to box him. He's going to use those rules. But what he's going to do is he's going to wrestle. He's going to grab. He's going to lean. He's going to put his arms on him. He's going to give him rabbit punches. He's going to. The ref is basically going to be constantly telling Ben Askren to get the fuck off of fucking Jake Paul. But he's going to do that for a few rounds, get him tired, and then thunderstrike him, which I could see possibly happening. The bad thing is. I could also see Ben going out there looking stupid, trying to flail his hands around and fucking Jake the dickhead Paul lighting his fucking face on fire and knocking Ben completely the fuck out. That's like not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. Which is sad. What what do you think? Okay, let's go through some scenarios. I think if Ben Askren wins, I think not much changes. Uh, you know, he's been fighting for double the time that yeah. the one of the Luke, Luke, Luke Paul that we're going with. Yeah, yeah. He's been fighting double the time that Luke Paul's been fighting. Order is restored in the universe. <laughs> it feels like. If Ben Askren wins, even if he just like outboxes him, it's like, now, okay, true. If if a Paul brother wins, what what does that do? Does do, do you think that gets one of them? Into the UFC? No, no. So, so what does that do for who? Because obviously Dana White is what talking is, about. What it. does that do for who? Like the landscape of fighting. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Um, now, what does that do for? There's a reason why an ex UFC guy is going up against one of the Paul brothers. Right. There's a reason why Dana White's talking about it. Even though Ben Askren well, that, well, isn't that, well, even that, in the UFC anymore. Well, that's the reason why Dana White's talking about it, because Ben Askren is fucking... <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. There's, but there's, but he could still mums the word. He's, he's not getting any money from it. No, no, I know, I know, I know. Well, yeah, but, but like... That's, but there's a reason why Dana White's talking about it. Ben Askren. Yeah, and if, and if a Paul brother beats Ben Askren, especially when Dana White is saying, I bet a million dollars he won't... Right, 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 right. Don't you think at some point Dana White is going to be like, listen, this is a fucking cash cow. If I bring him over to fight Mike Jackson, or I bring him in to fight, what not? You know what I mean? Not literally Mike Jackson, but if I bring him over to fight some three and O prospect that got here through the Contender Series or something along those lines, right? If I bring him over to put that fight, we will make an absurd amount of money. Um, listen, I'm definitely not going to say no. Dana White and the UFC have proven to be open to things. They brought over Brock Lesnar. CM Punk. They brought in James Tony. CM Punk being the the one that went the worst. Um, they've definitely done some shit like this in the past. So I wouldn't fucking put anything past them. I will say this. It does seem like Dana White doesn't really take the kid seriously. If he knocks out Ben Askren, I think he'll take him a little more seriously. But I think... Again, man, people like love the shit on Dana, but I think at the end of the day, Dana, look, one thing y'all got to realize about Dana White, man, he's been rich for a long time. Dana, I, Dana does care I just think about if, the sport. I just think if Dana White wasn't interested in having one of the, one of those guys in the UFC, whichever fucking one this is, if he wasn't, I'm not going to look it up, but if he wasn't interested in having one of those guys in the UFC, I don't think he'd be talking about it at all. Well, he didn't bring it up. He was on a I podcast. I know, but, but he's talked about it other places. Well, I mean, yeah, but people are asking him about it because everybody's talking about then it. Then just say, I'm not going to talk about it. 
Well, I don't think. He, well, Dude, that's a, that's a, but that'd be a good heel move. Just be like, I'm not, that fight's dumb. Um, I'm not gonna talk about that. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Talk about I, something else. I don't. <clears throat> again, listen. <clears throat> Would Dana White never sign a uh, 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 fucking Paul Craig or <laughs> fuck that goddamn Paul dude's Craig. name? Is Jesus fucking Christ, <laughs> he Jake did, Paul. He did sign Paul Craig. <laughs> shit, right? No bear you. Um, would Dana White ever like never sign you know fucking uh, uh, Jake Paul to a contract? I I don't know. Like you said, he comes with millions and millions of eyeballs, and that will do a lot of things. I do think that knocking out Ben Askren won't get him a, tr- a contract. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it won't. It all won't. right, all right. So no. we so we're placing our bets down. I am on the complete opposite side. You think if, if he, he knocks if him he, out, Dana White will offer him a contract in the UFC? If UC. he beats Ben Askren, no. I don't. It doesn't have to knock him out. No, no, no. no, no if no. he beats Ben Askren, mm. Dana White is gonna is gonna figure out a way to get him in the UFC. No, 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 no. I, I, no. no I'm no. so sure of this, and no. I know I shouldn't be, and I, I know it's absurd. No. How, like, uh earnestly or how like confidently i'm saying this but i am so confident i don't think so i i think i think if he knocks ben astron out and looks good i do think that dw might change his tune and be like listen sign him to zufa boxing well or why don't you take an mma fight or go to an mma camp start what about, training what about going on the contender series Something like but that. Do, but the problem with that is, do you, would well, someone like a no, Jake Paul do Probably that? not. Probably not. So he'd probably have to get the, the CM Punk fucking treatment, which is basically we try to give him a gimme when we give. But I went ahead I, and looked it up since I. Look, it, it's fucking Jake Paul. So we can okay, start saying sense. Jake Paul. Okay, now. Jake Paul. So listen, Jake Paul's a huge star. I don't know if I would say that he is a bigger star than CM Punk was when he was coming to the UFC. And I definitely wouldn't say that he was a bigger star than Brock Lesnar was when he was making his transition into the UFC, where he was like the heavyweight champion in the WWE and one of their most popular fucking wrestling stars. I know Jake Paul's really big on YouTube now, but all you little heathen kids don't really understand what the WWE motherfucking E used to be in this world. Um, And both of those guys had to at least train for a sufficient amount of time. Brock even had to take a fight or two in Japan. A couple boxing matches, one against a fucking NBA player and one against, yeah, an ex-UFC fighter who's known exclusively for his grappling and known to have very bad hands. That would be like Clarissa Shields asking to box Ronda Rousey. You know, I mean... That's actually... That's actually a pretty good comparison. Do you know what I mean? Like, Ben Askren is is, is not only known... Except Jake Paul's not. (laughs) Yeah, not as good as fucking Clarissa Shields. What the fuck? Um, Nowhere near. So, so... Look, might this roll into something where he could make a, a, a debut in the UFC? Maybe, but he would have to be serious. Yeah. Dana White's not going to let him make a mockery of what he worked for for 20 years. And I know I'm sure some people hear that and go, oh, oh, oh God, of course. Like, like CM Punk wasn't a mockery. Like, 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 blah, 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 blah. shut the fuck up. You know, CM Punk was uh, a bit of a fuck up. Fair enough, for sure. But oh, my my hot take, my hot take, uh, my 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 hot take uh, thing is tingling. I my, think my, my with, senses. with CM Punk, what you have to understand, man, and this is what like I think a lot of people don't get. He had been training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a very, very, very long time, and Dana White knew that. He's also fucking you know a WWE wrestler, which doesn't count for much. But listen, fucking Jake Paul is. A YouTube star. Do you think having Jake... He wasn't even an athlete, for fuck's sake. Do you think having Jake Paul fight on a UFC card against a low-level prospect, a 3-0, 2-0, 4-0, whatever, Mm -hmm. prospect. Sure. Maybe that's coming up through the Contender Series. Maybe they just sign him directly to fight him, right? Yep. Do you think that makes a mockery of the UFC more than continuing to trot out Diego Sanchez, or continuing to trot out, but when BJ Penn fought Dennis Seaver, like do do you think that's any less of a mockery? Um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think to be fair, I think I, I I think it's in the same I field. Think, I think I think you're being you're still, you're being a little disrespectful to the legends, though. I, I mean, look, Jake Paul. I think Jake, respectful to the legends would be like 
you guys aren't allowed to fight anymore. I yeah. think that's being respectful to the legends. You go tell Diego Sanchez that to his face. I dare you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, Jake Paul's Jake Paul. Diego Sanchez is a real fighter who's, again, I understand your point. But, like, at least with those dudes, it's like we know you shouldn't be fighting, but you're legit a warrior. And who knows, all joking aside, maybe the Jake Paul kid can actually fight. But we, t- all things being equal, again, all jokes aside, we have no idea, really. We'll see what happens in the Ben Asker fight where he's cherry-picked the guy who's been a wrestler his whole life. Of we'll course. see what happens there. If he happens to knock him out, then maybe he, you know, can can do some grappling or maybe box a, an actual boxer the, the, the biggest negative, uh, along those lines. Yeah, the, the, you know, the, the, his age, his size. That's another thing. He's boxing dudes. He's a pretty big boy. I, you know, Ben Askren's a 170 or I think if he actually fought, I'm not mistaken, I think the fucking, the Paul kid is fucking, Jake Paul's like 200, 220 or something. He's a fucking big kid, man. So it's like, we're also not, we're not really working in reality here, man. Like, you know, he'd be middleweight or light heavyweight if he was an MMA baby, if he took this thing seriously. So, you know, if you happens to knock Askren out, which is possible, maybe you should take like a real boxing match against another kid. His size, his age, you know, and let's see how you do it. Go get a fucking black kid from Chicago that's been been boxing for about 10 years. You knock that guy out, Jake Paul, you know, an up-and-comer that's legit, that people are like, yo, this guy might be a future champ, like, a, a you know, a contender in that world. Then maybe Dana White would be like, all right, hey, fuck, yeah, let's – now we, you know, he's a cash cow because of his popularity, but, wow, kid might actually be able to fight, too. Yeah. I, I just think we are careening toward this. Now, there's a reason why Jake Paul picked Ben Askren. Well, so I don't think he wants to be in the UFC right now. Because if he did, he wouldn't be fighting Ben Askren. Right, right. He wouldn't he's, be boxing. He, he's sure. being he's being very, <clears throat> and I'm saying wants to be in the, want to be in the UFC in that he actually thinks he stands a chance. I guess that's what I'm saying. Sure, sure. I think sure. he wants to be in the UFC. Sure, I sure. think that's that is his end game. Right, right. It, Take it, a big fight over there, get some big money. But yeah, I don't, or, or a Bellator. I don't think he right, would right, really right. care. I mean, he's a little older. Who, whoever's right. going to pay him the money? Twenty four, twenty five, or something. We haven't even really talked about this, but Bellator. It's not. I guess it's not back on showing time. Back on uh, showing time. That's my app I use for real for real estate. Uh, Showtime. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is sort of a big deal. Back on Showtime. Sort of a big deal. I guess it's not back on, but you know what I mean. It's like, on Showtime. Well, because before wasn't Strike Force on Showtime as well. Yes, 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 yeah. yeah. So Showtime has MMA again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they didn't do it bad before. I mean, it's sort of a bum that it's behind a paywall, but you know, not a few. Websites can't fix. <laughs> I have Showtime, so that's all right. Written in Schwab. I keep wanting to say showing time. See, I, I use an app in real estate. I was like five bucks book a month, ten bucks a month or something. It's not like expensive. That. It's not bad. Fuck, I, you know, I've been waiting for this. My and whole you get a life. shit ton of movies and you get some good shows. Yeah, yeah. And, and Bellator, yeah. which actually right now Bellator with their with their. Um, Do you still have the zone? Nah, zone suck my dick. They went. They were like five bucks or ten bucks or something. They shot up to thirty a month. Man, that's wild. I don't give a fuck how many times Canelo fights on his own, bro. I ain't paying you. But plus, first off, well, whatever. You don't care about boxing, but no. Anyways, no, I do not. Boxing start. Boxing is so fucked. If boxing is like, <laughs> boxing could be so great. I tell you what, boxing is exactly what the fuck we better hope never happens to MMA. Because it's got the potential to be really good. There are great boxers right now in their prime. There's just so much red tape and there's so, so much, much politics. Yeah, so much politics. So much horseshit over money. It's there's so many. Well, there's a fifty fucking thousand belts. If, if you're right. if you're approaching boxing from from where I'm standing, where I don't care about it, and you have no idea what's going on, it's the reason I don't like hockey. Right. Because I feel like it lasts forever. Right. I'm like, the Stanley Cup happens, and then the next day, I, I feel like people oh. are going, yeah, these five teams are now in the playoffs for hockey. I'm like, what the f- Didn't the Stanley Cup just happen yesterday? I agree. And then it's like every team in hockey makes it. And again, whether this is true or not, I'm just telling you from an outside perspective. It feels like every team makes the playoffs for the hockey. For hockey. I don't think a single team doesn't make the playoffs, which makes no sense. And then the playoffs last for 10 years. Right. And then you have the Stanley Cup, and then hockey starts again. Right, 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 right. right. I'm like, it just it doesn't interest me. And with because boxing, it, it seems like every with boxing, guy with has some sort of belt. It, yeah, with boxing, it's like, how many fucking belts are there? Well, and you know the problem. Isn't it supposed to just be one? You know the problem with that is there's 132 weight divisions. And that's I why. See, and that's crazy that's to me, too. Why, that's why in MMA... Everybody's like 165 pound weight division, right? Bridge that gap between 55 and 70. It makes sense, right? Boom, 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 boom. Um, 
That's exactly why. The, but the reason why I'm okay with that is because you're only adding one division. No, no, but I guess the point. And then you're shifting another one. You're going 65, 75, right. 85. It actually makes more sense. I to know, me. but I guess the point is, people's point with that would be, that's how it starts. Well, we added a 145 to women, and look how that fucking turned out. Well, that's what, it, but that's so it's, how it's it true. starts. Like, but 25 it, turned out well. That's what I, but see, that's what I mean. And you're like, well, if 125 went good, 128 and a half would probably be no, pretty good. Okay, so now that is where. But that's the problem that is where, is where we line. assume that. Because listen, here, boxing used to have five, six weight divisions. There used to just be a, a light heavyweight and a heavyweight and a cruiserweight and a middleweight. And then it just kept getting more and more fucky. And, you know, more belts mean more money and more politics and more championship fights. Championship fights generate more fucking eyeballs and income, so on and so forth. But, yeah, anyways, short tangent on boxing. Boxing could be fucking amazing. And every once in a while, you get one of those really big, like, boxing. Like, um, again, I know you don't really care much in, on this MMA podcast, but they just finally got the deal done for Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury to sort of well, and that's interesting. finally bring the heavyweight belts together. But it took forever. Fucking Tyson's fought three jerks in the meantime. Anthony Joshua had to fight two. Uh, they call them mandatories in boxing because it's so fucked that they, like, make you fight the, the other guy so that the sexy name just doesn't get to steal it. Which I guess would make some sense in the UFC because we do complain about that a lot where Connor just comes in because he's the sexy name. He steals it if we have man. But, you know, be careful what you wish for, right? Can you imagine if we had mandatories in the UFC and some shit bird that we all – nobody really likes fighting. He just kind of struggled his way to the number one position. And it's like, fuck. <laughs> now the champion has to defend against this fucking guy even though we know we really want him to defend against Masvidal who's number two or three. What the fuck? Like – I know some people out there probably feel like, fuck it, why have rankings if you're not going to follow them? But for me, I sort of see why it's sort of fun to be a little loosey-goosey with them every once in a while. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily even mind, uh, like, the mandatory aspect, I guess. Oh, boy. <laughs> that sneeze been building up there for a second. <laughs> I was waiting for it to come out. I don't mind, like, I guess the mandatory aspect. I understand why boxing does that. I'm cool with it. But, my Lord, the amount of confusion trying to come into boxing about what's what and who's who and how's how. and It's hard. And lie. it just, it, I think it's going to keep people out. The UFC or MMA in general, especially kind of American MMA, you know, it can get a little, maybe a little loosey-goosey when you're traveling out. But, like, like, Ryzen's real fucking weird. But, like, you know, Bellator and One and the UFC... And Combate, they're even still hanging around. I haven't heard about them in forever. But it, at least it makes sense. It's easy to track for the most part. Like, the way you know what's going are, on. The way divisions are easy to follow, the champions are easy to follow, yeah. I think that with them, with boxing folks, it would just be more like the rules are weird. Like, they don't understand our rules. and which Well, is and we do have several different promotions. So right. I guess you could theoretically go... Well, who, so who's Ryan Bader then right, right, if right. this guy's the champion? Right. Like, yeah, I think it's a pretty simple explanation, though, to be like, you know, we, we, the, the UFC is here. Bellator is here. But you know what? That's not always that simple because I do think that fucking what's it, the prick's name Diego Lima, right? That's the good one yes. from Bellator. I do think that he could absolutely. Do I think that he would beat Kamaru Usman? People get their pain. I don't know about all of that. But I think that he could compete top five in the well, UFC let's try, all day long. Let, let, easy, easy. You know I love segues. So let's fucking segue right over into uh, into a Bellator guy who came over to the UFC, Michael Chandler. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Got a huge knockout. Breaking news. Got a huge knockout in his first fight. Yep. Uh, I mean, really fucking slick knockout. Oh. And, oh, yep. Go ahead. Well, go, okay. ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. So UFC came out and announced that the lightweight belt is officially uh, vacated. Yep. Uh, whether that means Habib's officially retired or not. I well, that's know. what it means for now. But that's what he, it means for now. He's gone, and it's yeah, the belt the belt's up for grabs. And and that's what it means for now. Right. So he is officially gone. Now we got that belt back on the line. Right. The fight they booked for that vacant belt, one side is Alex Oliveira, or Charles Oliveira. Right. Right. Sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the Brazilian Cowboy. No, that's, that's not, a not weight class up. That's yeah. a weight class up. Uh, but Charles Oliveira. That piece of it makes a lot of sense. Right. We, we knew he was heading towards that spot anyway. Right, right. That's the next guy up. He deserves it. Yep. The other side of it, they booked Michael Chandler. Yep. Now, 
thoughts on the Michael Chandler aspect of this? I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad about it. I ain't mad at it. But it, was there another fight that made more sense? Not really. I mean, Gaethje? Gaethje makes the most sense. That's the only other name that pops to mind. Because, listen, let, let's, let's go on ahead and just jump right on that big-ass elephant in the corner. Uh, Poirier, who should be the cocksucking champion, but we already know what time it is. He's getting that third red panty night with Connor. So, fair enough. There. So, Do you think this booking solidifies Poirier and McGregor? Oh, absolutely. I bet my beautiful left now. What, now, did they fight at 170? Did Poirier and McGregor fight at 170? Yes, yes they did. Yes they All did. Right. I think. I think. Fuck, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure they did. I think that I was think one of Connor's stipulations. Too. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they fought at 70. Let's look real quick. I'm pre- okay, we looked it up. So no, it, yeah, it was at 55. Okay, right, right, right. Now, so that just okay, even more so solidifies that fight's happening again. Right. Period. Right. Well, because they on the card, Michael Chandler and Dan Hooker was the co-main. Right. Poirier and McGregor was the main. Right. 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 So theoretically. Poirier beating McGregor, sure, sure. you would think, puts him up for the title. Sure. So, yeah, well, this is everything. plain as day. Yeah. They're booking Chandler there because McGregor is fighting Poirier. And correct. Again, they're doing that rematch. They're running back from the rubber match. Sure. And I, how, do, how do you think that goes? The rubber match? Yeah. I think Connor knocks him out. Okay. I mean, I don't trade, Jack. I don't, I don't fold and run. I, 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 listen, all joking aside, I thought Connor looked pretty good in the fight. I think, you know what? I think, for me, um, for all of you, for all of me, I think one of Connor's main hindrances has been, and this is going to sound a little funny because it's also been one of the things that's made him great, but isn't that just how life works usually? Yeah. Um, the things that make us great are usually the things that bring us down. His confidence, his confidence and his cockiness. I thought against Habib, he was stupid to jump into the grappling exchange. I thought he thought he was going to be able to handle himself better there, and it backfired on him, and he didn't. He got drained out and fucking finished. Yep. I think he got clipped good against Dustin, and I think in his head he knew it. He got knocked against the cage, and I think in that moment, I've said this on the podcast before, he should have panicked a little more. Um, don't do nothing stupid. But throw a teep kick, circle to the left, get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Don't bob and weave on the cage like you've seen your favorite fighter Anderson Silva or Israel Adesanya or Muhammad Ali do. Get the fuck out of there. Get out of there, circle, regroup, think, grab him, hold him. Think about the think about the the rematch with Diaz. Right. Where he's he's running the whole time. Right. Right. Anytime right. he's in any type of issues, he's getting away. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and this is not and all bullshit aside, this is not me being a Connor nut hugger. I just I do think he's talented. I think that I thought the first round went really well. I don't really remember who I gave the first round to in, in the um in the in the Poirier Connor rematch, but I know it was close. I know they both rocked each other um connor can take a punch it's just <clears throat> he took that punch he got rocked he got on the cage and i think his ego got the best of him he decided oh yeah come on jack come on let me he's like I'm yeah a, he's I'm, like yeah i'm, you, I'm, a, I'm a bob you hurt play. me yeah you hurt me but that's all Watch right this i'll, I'll yeah. bob weave and, and catch you one of these classy and he, and he bobbed right into a big right hook i think yeah. if he comes in with his head screwed on right and he takes him fucking seriously, and he does not, you know, if he does happen to get clipped, get the fuck out of there, do the smart, hold on, you know, you know, do what every smart fighter does. You think John Jones hasn't been a little clipped or rocked in fights and shit? He, but he does the smart thing. If he does get hurt in any way, shape, or form, he closes the distance, grabs the fuck a hold of you, puts you on the ground, or at the very least, holds you there for a second. I mean, there are ways to not just get knocked out. I, I feel like Connor has to start smarting a little, fighting a little smarter and, and not um, letting his ego get so much of the best of him. Like, dude, maybe your head movement isn't as great as you think. It, it's good. Has McGregor ever lost a rematch? No. I think he's only had. He's only had two, I think, right? Or a couple. Um well, I guess lost a rematch after coming off a loss. Coming off a loss. Right, 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 right. Like right. obviously the Poirier is a rematch, but that's not, right. that's not what I mean. Right, right, right. He's never he's never had two losses in a row. I, I guess will be the yeah. He's never. I, he's right. never. I don't think he's ever. Definitely not since he got to the UFC for sure. He's, he's lost to Habib. He's lost to Poirier. He's lost to Diaz. We well, lost to Habib and Diaz, and he won after those. Well, I'm just trying to think of who he's lost to. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. He lost to Habib and Diaz, and he won after both those matches. Now, his last fight was Poirier. We'll see what happens next. Yeah. He hasn't lost two fights in a row in the UFC for sure. Well, yeah, and I'm trying to think of who he's lost to and then who he's fought again. So he lost to Diaz, fought Diaz again, and won. Right. He fought Habib. He hasn't fought him again. Right. He lost to, to Poirier. 
TBD. TBD. Right, 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 right. Who else he lost to in the UFC? Is it just those three? Yeah, yeah. yeah Boye, yeah. Habib. Yeah, yeah. The only other loss he has on his career, to the best of my knowledge, was uh, Joseph Duffy. Yeah. And he on. never got that rematch again. Yeah, but that was, that was, that was, we thought it was going to happen because Joe Duffy looked good for a while, but yeah. then he sort of and fell now off the it, cliff. Now it doesn't make any sense. Right, right, right. He took a couple, like, big L's. So, huh. But yeah, I th- all, all, again, all bullshit aside, as far as that rematch, that, that rubber match goes, I feel like both those guys could win. I think both of them are super talented, and it's just like whoever sort of it. Do not be surprised. A lot of people, I think, are writing Connor off like, "Oh, he's done. He's not motivated." Blah 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 blah. blah. Do not be surprised if you see Connor come out and starts Dustin in the third fight. And let me tell you something: if they made him just keep fighting. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dustin starts Connor in the fifth fight. Like, I think they're just both. When you get two, ta- especially two talented strikers that like to box, I just think it, it's a 50 50 shot. Who's going to land that one that puts the other one on Queer Street? The first time they fought, fucking Connor land that shot. Down went Dustin. Second time they fought, Dustin land that shot and down went Connor. Third time they fight, Chances are whoever lands that first big money shot that sort of puts the other one on ice skates. Well, one thing about both of those gentlemen, they're finishers. So that's what they're sort of looking for. They're looking for that one that puts you on wobbly skates, and whoever lands that one first, there's a good chance that if the other person has the, the energy to finish the fight, that's all she wrote. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm a Connor fan. I think he'll land the shot, but... For me, that's what that fight sort of comes down to. There's not going to be a whole lot of grappling and shooting and strategy on that perspective. It's going to be, we're going to strike and see who lands that first big one, and that's probably going to be the beginning of the end. So let's transition a little bit. We were talking about the weight classes. Let's talk about women's 145. Okay. Real quick. Yeah, this will be a quick conversation. Yeah. Is it officially done? For now. For now, I don't think the weight division will be done. I think there will be a point where we'll have that weight division active. But for now, I mean, yeah, there's no talent there. There's no girls there. We when was the last time there was an Invicta fight? Yes, yeah, the wrong white boy. I, I feel like they kind of shut down. I don't I remember I don't the really last. Know. I don't remember the last Invicta fight. I'll be honest. I was a very, very casual Invicta fan. I would tune in for the. I mean, I would tune in. The, uh, I, I, I really would. Fight. I would. I would tune into those. But I don't remember. The last time they've had one. Because in order for there to be a 145-pound division in the UFC, you really got to have well, uh, listen, shit. You really got to have Invicta doing its thing. The last Invicta fight was November 2020. Yeah. The, the, the division will, will, will come, though. Um, I have no doubt about it. We have Kayla Harrison's out there. She's not the only one of her specimen. And she's at 55, for fuck's sake. So, yeah. Um, there will be a 45 division. What is it's she doing next? Time. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's in the PFL, right? Or is she in she PFL Bellator sort of I, thing? I think she's like in Bellator now. Or something, or I, I, th- I think she's still at the PFL maybe, but like they're allowing her to take fights in Bellator or they allowed her. One thing I will give Scott Coker in Bellator, man, that motherfucker's been winning the Cobra Moat and it's worked pretty well for him. Yeah. I, mean, I think you, you kind of have to. Yeah. If you're not the UFC, you better. That's probably how Scott Coker sells it on all these people. Like, Listen. So she has not done anything with Bellator. She fought in Invicta. Oh, okay. November 2020. Oh, okay. Well, then that's good. That's even better. So she fought at PFL 2 6 11 1. Oh, because of the new season. 1 4 7 10. And then she fought an Invicta last. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's even better then. That uh, brings her closer to home, so to speak. She took, a fe- she took a featherweight. That was her featherweight debut. Okay. She, and she won by knockout. Nice. nice. There you go. So she's Courtney be- King. Yeah. I look, it, it, for now, yes, there's not much of a women's featherweight division. No doubt about it. I do think that there will be a featherweight division in time. We just have to let, you know, sometimes it takes time for the. There are women that size of, uh, uh, that have the skill. It's just going to take some time to get uh, the whole weight division developed properly. Yeah. Hmm. I think eventually there will be an atom weight for men. I think there will eventually be a 115-pound division for men. Now, again, it might be two or three years away. It might have to blow up in fucking China and Thailand. Uh, but it, it's coming, I think. I do think it's coming. By the way, did you know that uh, Kayla Harrison was born and raised in Middletown? Absolutely. I tried to get it's a crazy. fucking interview with her a long time ago. I'll tell you something right now. Between me, you, and the trees, she fucking big-timed me. Oh, and that no. was before. That was when she was on her way to the goddamn Olympics, too. I thought for sure I could get her. Matter of fact, I was thinking, like, you know, listen, we just had Boss Rooting on. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> we had my fucking El Guapo on, Jack. Talking about bar fights in Russia. Fuck you mean. <laughs> Talk to your agent. Talk to my agent. Uh, she was then, so I'm, I'm, I'm giving the other promotions here. 
Uh, Harrison was handed a contract exemption to sign with Invicta, F- Invicta FC, where she made her debut there. She was then expected to compete for Titan FC. She was scheduled for December 17th, 2020. Uh, however, her opponent got hospitalized due to a bad weight cut. The bout was canceled, and she's not fought since. So she's got these... She's going other places. So I'm interested in kind of where she's going now. Yeah. I'm interested in Kayla Harrison. Yeah. Especially I, I, with we are starved. You know, honestly. Can you, I mean, man, if she can make featherweight and can fight Amanda Nunes, honestly, I am all on board for that. I think that all we need to do is MMA fans for real, for real on some real shit. And I think people like DW and, and you know, the, the, the leaders of the industry, so to speak, I think they sort of understand that. Certainly the coaches and shit out there on the on the cutting edge of the talent and stuff. Um. This shit's going to open up and just keep getting bigger, man. Like, it, it just take. think about it. Five years ago, which is not very long ago, five years ago, the talent of women that were arriving to the UFC was somewhat akin to the cocksucking tank abbots of the world. I mean... And maybe five years is a bit of a crowd. You know, when, when when women first got to the UFC, when Ronda first came in, now Ronda Rousey's great, but there is also a reason why she was just trashing them hoes left and right. The level of talent was just not there, really. Look at the strides we have made. Now you get women in their first fight in the UFC, and these broads can fight. They'll fucking be fighting with broken noses. They'll have clean boxing. They'll be fucking kicking. Their wrestling will be on point. I mean, the the the, the level of talent for just women's MMA overall has increased a, a thousand fold in five years. Give it another ten. You know, um, just like right now we're seeing, you know, Russia and Africa have a real fucking resurgence of talent being brought into fucking, the, you know, the UFC. I think those dudes have always been there. It's just like words just finally sort of getting around. And I think there are going to be other pockets of the world that have really tough broads that we just don't know about yet. Where do we know? Poland. We know the Poland's got some tough broads. We've seen them come out of there. Let's just say sort of Eastern European block in general. A lot of tough girls. You see one of them girls, one of those fucking Scrabble names? You know what time it is. Fucking Karolina Korakiewicz. Fucking Joanna Yingjacek. You know what time it is. Fucking, um, but but I think that as the sport develops and it gets into all these different countries and shit, I think you're going to see a lot more female talent sort of coming out of the woodwork and in places that may surprise you. You know what I'm saying? Where you're like, oh shit, we yeah. got a fucking a, a, a female from Pakistan who can fucking fight her ass off. What the fuck? Just because all of a sudden, you know. People started teaching women in Pakistan how to fucking fight. Like, <laughs> right now, ain't a broad in the Middle East allowed to barely drive a car. Wait till we let them hoes start boxing. It's just going to take a matter of time before it gets there. But I, I really, truly feel like that. Like, it's the same thing with men and stuff, you know. Um, any of the divisions that seem like they're light at the moment, just give it time. Every division's light for a moment. I remember uh, a couple years ago, middleweight. I was like, ah, middleweight's fucking dead on the vine. And then all of a sudden, it was exciting as fuck. Israel's back and, you know. It's all just a matter of time, man. I agree. Patience. Yeah, yeah. That, Patience for real. Gotta want. For real. Like, th- there's always, it's like every time we lose a big star, like, wh- Lord knows whenever Connor does retire, the fucking trolls are going to come out. Oh, Dana White. There goes all the memes with Dana White on the respirator. are going to be all over Twitter. Bro, y'all are so stupid. Y'all don't, like, don't get me wrong. We're all going to be sad to see Connor go. Make no mistake about it. He was a cash cow. Real talk. But you guys are fucking idiots. If you think that that's going to actually fucking, like, ruin the UFC or anything, like, they'll be just fucking fine. There's going to be more stars. This is the way it goes. Yes. So, two things. One, let's look at the pay-per-view for next week. And then uh, we need to do a little follow-up to Chimiev. Because we talked about the fact that he had announced his retirement. I think either one of us really believed it. Right, right. But I was definitely on the side of if this thing fucked him up as bad as... He's saying it has. Right. Uh, Who knows? We, we've already known that this can have lifelong effects. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, as, as far as damage to the lungs and that right. kind of stuff. So, real quick. Main event is Stipe Naganu. Amazing fight. Pr- pretty clearly going one of two ways. Right, right, right. Which way do you think it goes specifically? I think Francis knocks him out this time. That's what I think. I mean, it, it's. It, I do think it's very much 50-50. Like, I, I could see Francis knocking him out in the first round. But that's why it's such a good fight. 
Because right, you have right. no idea. Right, right. Because I can also see Francis coming close to knocking him out, not getting the knockout, and then Stipe making it look exactly like the first fight looked. You know what I mean? Like taking some big shots into the second, beginning of the third, taking over with his wrestling and pounding the fuck out of Francis for the rest of the fight. Now, we lost our co-main. Which really fucking sucks. Yeah, that a fantastic I love fight. that fucking. Fight. The new co-main is Tyron Woodley Vincent Luque. Um, which, I'm mad at it. I mean, again, it's like that's cool. You know, it's a cool. I'm fight. cool with it's it. No fucking Brian Ortega versus fucking Volkanovski, but I'll fucking take it. I suppose. But um, it is what it is. Uh, below that, you got Thomas Almeida, Sean O'Malley. That's a great. Love fight. that fight. Fun fight. Uh, you got Jamie Malarkey versus Kama Worthy. That's a good fight too. It's cool with that fight. as well. Yep. And then you got Alonzo Manafield versus William Knight. Solid. Yeah. Solid. It, it, it's, it's it is card. what it is. That's a solid pay per view card. Can't be mad. <laughs> I would. I would also love to see the Johnny Walker fight, but that one got he got injured. Yeah. Well, the one good thing about that, not good. It but, was you Johnny. Know, it was Johnny Walker and Jimmy Crute. At least we get those fights in the future now. Well, some future. Uh, yeah. Future card. You're, you're going to get Ortega Volkanovski at some point Soon. here, assuming Soon. he doesn't. COVID doesn't fucking well, wreck him. Right, which right, well, right, let's right. talk about that. So Hazmat. So we didn't give a follow up to it. So Hazmat. Uh, I'll just read this little blurb. blurb. On March 1st, 2021, he announced on Instagram that he was retiring from the sport of mixed martial arts due to lung complications caused by COVID-19. Dana White later came out and said that Hazmat is not retired and just emotional after experiencing effects of prednisone. When he got here, this is a quote from Dan White. When he got here, I'm going to read all the fuckings too because I just love how Dana White talks <laughs> for an interview. When he got here, the doctors took took care of him and they put him on prednisone, which is really nasty. Which is a really nasty fucking steroid. White told him a junkie. So he's on prednisone. He's not supposed to be taking. He's supposed to be taking this thing, chilling and relaxing and letting himself recover. He went in and fucking trained today. Felt like shit and got super emotional and posted and posted that. He's not supposed to be training, but you know, the guy's a savage. He wants to fight like every fucking weekend, and now he can't even train. So he just got emotional and posted that, but he ain't quitting. Uh, so have you taken prednisone, Fred? No, I've never taken such a thing. And I have possibly told the story in here. I'm not sure, but I'm going to tell it again. And I'll give you the backstory too, just because it's a crazy story. Uh, but my back started hurting one day. I was out playing disc golf, and I, I felt like I like, tweaked my back, right? Just one of those things. Typically, when I would get back pain prior to this, uh, get back pain for a second and you're fine. You know what I mean? Goes away a day or two. Sure, sure, Doesn't sure. Doesn't really matter. No big deal. My knee's a lot more fucked up because I had an injury to it. So if I if that knee starts hurting, I'm fucked for a couple of days. Like, I really got to. But back pain for me usually goes away pretty quickly. So anyway, fast forward about three weeks. And it's increasingly gotten worse every single day. And I'm the type of guy that just does not go to the doctor unless I absolutely have to. Same. So fast forward about three weeks, I am emotionally and physically just wrecked. I am laying in my bed the night before I finally go to urgent care. I, I'm laying in the bed. I'm fucking crying. I'm like depressed. I cannot get comfortable. No position is comfortable. Like, you name the position, wasn't working. Right, right, right. Sitting up, laying down, on my knees, fetal, leg up, leg down, leg off the bed. Like, it just didn't matter. I could not get rid of this pain. And didn't sleep a fucking wink. As soon as urgent care opened, I'm in the fucking parking lot. I right. go in because I don't want to go to the emergency room. So I'm like, I just need to go in here and maybe they'll give me a shot or something. I don't fucking know what they do, but, like, something's got to happen because right. it's not getting any better. So I go in there, they do x-rays, and he, he felt my, uh, when I walked in, they kind of felt my area, right? They felt where my, my pain was. Right. And he's like, he kind of makes like a, huh, all right, well, let's get you an x-ray real quick just to double check. Don't love that. So they give me an x-ray, and, he, and the doctor comes in, and he goes, well, I got good news and I got bad news. God, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right? It was like, it's an urgent care doctor, so it's not even a doctor. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but it was good. I, I liked, we were joking beforehand, so I, I kind of, I understood. So he's like, I got, I got bad news, I got good news. He goes, the good news is you're going to walk out of here feeling a lot better. He's like, the bad news is your hip's out of place. So we got to pop your hip back in place. Ugh. My fucking hip had been out of place. How does that even happen? Yeah, I, I have know. no idea. Uh, At some point, I popped my hip out of place. Have no recollection of doing it. I've been walking around for a couple weeks with my fucking, you know, hip joint rubbing around. So anyway, most intense pain you've ever felt in your life for a half second. Maybe just going crack. When they pop it back in, it feels like your entire body was <laughs> dipped into lava. 
but for like a half second. You know what I mean? And then it is sweet relief. You're like, oh. oh. I mean, it's like an orgasm, dude. You're just like, they pop it back in. You're like, you're like, oh, shit. Oh, oh God. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Dude, yeah. Human sucks. It's kind of like when you, like, I guess when you pop, I've never popped my shoulder out of place. Right, right, right. But you, I, I mean, I think people describe the same thing. <sighs> where your shoulder's out of place oh, and then they pop it back in. You're like, yeah. oh, God. Like, it's just rubbing around and shit. It's not supposed to be rubbing in. But anyway, so they pop my head back in place. And they give me a cortisone shot. They give me a toradol shot. And they're like, you got to take prednisone because we got to, like, kind of build this back up. So <laughs> I don't even know what prednisone is. I, right, right, right. I'd even like, uh, you could have said the word steroid to me, and I'm like, all right, cool, yeah, whatever. I'd even, I'd, I'm not even connecting it with like right, right, right. a steroid that you take. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I thought. But anyway, so I take prednisone, and uh, it's like two or three in the afternoon, and I'd also had a, sh- I'd also had a shot, a, a steroid shot as well. Right, right. So I had doubled up on steroids. Right, I had right. given me a shot, and then I had taken this prednisone. So it's about, t- it's about two o'clock, two, three o'clock. And we have some friends over and, uh, I have anxiety. I have pretty bad anxiety. So when I start having like a panic attack or an anxiety attack, I'll usually kind of give my wife a signal like, Hey, I'm having a panic attack. I'm going to like step out of the room. Right. So I kind of give her a signal like, Hey, I'm having a panic attack. I need to go in the other room. So I go in the room and I have an Apple watch. So I look at my Apple watch. My heart rate's like 170, which if you're having a panic attack, that's not crazy i mean that's your heart gets about that high if you're kind of mid panic attack but it goes down pretty quickly right well it's just hanging out at 170 and i'm sitting here like oh, trying to breathe I'm, I, I'm sweating cold cold sweat Oof. my fucking arm's starting to go numb i'm like i'm looking at my heart rate this is the big one well. it's like it's still it's still at 170 it's not going anywhere i go to the bathroom i'm splashing cold water on my face i'm trying not to overreact because right. i'm like I, I i have i have a panic disorder right i know i know that about myself right, 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 right. and a lot of times when you're having a panic attack you feel like you're having a heart attack right, right, right. and i don't want to overreact and go to the like, fucking hospital i'm dying i'm dying yeah and i really like that's how it was when i was a kid and this would happen to me that's what would happen i would start oh my god oh shit oh, and i'm like hyperventilating and like, right, right. Pass like out don't and, do that yeah so I've, I've had this for a long time so i've learned how to deal with it but I've never had my heart rate stay that high for that long. Right. I'm like 20 minutes in at this point, and my heart will not drop below like 160, no matter what I do. Right. So I take a cold bath. Still cannot get it to drop. And meanwhile, Justine is like, what the fuck is happening? So finally, I, I'm like, I go out there and I kind of get Justine to come in the room, and I'm like, I'm dying. I'm like, I'm not trying to be dramatic. I need to go to the hospital because I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> I'm having a heart attack. I cannot get my heart to drop. I'm cold sweating. My shit's numb. My chest is tight. I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm pretty I, sure I'm dying. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, I know I have anxiety. I've I'm not trying time. to be ridiculous. I'm having a fucking heart attack. I'm dying. I'm literally dying. <laughs> I need to go to the hospital. How do I do this without being embarrassed? Because that's all I was worried about. I was like, I'm just embarrassed. I'm like, I'm embarrassed because on, on the back of my mind, I'm like, you're not having a heart attack. But everything else is telling that's me I'm having a fucking heart attack. So just Justine's like, Kyle, you took two steroids today. You know that, right? And I was like, yeah, but so, my heart is like this. She's like, no, sweetheart, you're fine. You, you took two steroids today. Right. Your heart's going to be jacked. Right. I did not make the connection whatsoever. Right. At no point did it ever cross my mind that I'm feeling this way because of this steroid. Right, right. And I don't know fucking why. Right, right. But I had to take prednisone for like 10 days. And you have to like increase. It's really bizarre. It's not you take a bunch and then decrease. It was like you have to like increase as you're going. It's really it. weird. But anyway, the week I took prednisone for the first three or four days, fuck that. They gave me prednisone because now this thing on my back is a reoccurring thing because mm-hmm. I did some damage to the fucking ligaments and right. shit. So I'll, I'll get pain down there. They got to give me like a tortle shot. And they gave me prednisone this last time. I was like, bro, you could not pay me to take prednisone. Yeah, I'll just, you I'll, could I'll, I'll not just pay me. I don't care what ha- – like, like my mom's had to take prednisone for when she has had like some lung issues. Yeah. Nah, I'm dying. That let me fucking rot in that hospital bed. I am not taking a fucking steroid for as long as I live. That day, I thought I was dead. I'm like, this is it. I'm in the fucking bath, 
my whole body shaking, <laughs> my heart rate's in the 160s. I'm like, I'm too embarrassed to go to the fucking hospital. I'm going to goddamn Whitney Houston in this bathtub right now. <laughs> goddamn. Never again. Never again, prednisone. Fair enough. There it is. That's my story of prednisone. All right. Well, I mean, listen. Then Motherfucker, maybe, I thought I was dead. Maybe he ain't retiring. Maybe he's just <laughs> freaking the fuck out. So I don't doubt it. <laughs> you're just like, you're, you're, ugh. And it also, it fucks with your emotions. Right, right, right. It does, 100%. Right, right. right, right, right. I was, like, super agitated. I'd be, Irritated like, real quick to get angry. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I would like, imagine. it's a fucking steroid. I don't know why that just didn't compute with me. Right, right, But, like, right. it's a literal steroid. Yeah. So, I don't know. It just I think it'll be back. The question mind. is, will he be as good as he was before he left? Yeah. Physically. I mean, That's he's got to take some. Once he's fully recovered, right. he needs to do an eight-week camp or right, something. Right, you know, right, like right. He needs Really to, get it right. He needs to really get back into it. Don't do not do one of those short notice things and try to fly in there by the seat of your pants. Right, right, right. You know, get in there and get it, get it done. So, all right, cool. Well, Fred, it was a pleasure, sir. All right. As always. As always. Always love seeing your face. Yes, sir. <laughs> Talk soon. All right, brother.